Uh, this is interview number two. We're at Paul Deese's clinic in December the 12th at the home ranch. And, uh, and right now we're going to visit with Christine Cook Deets, Paul's wife. And my question is with her basically going to be focused on how she got started in this type of horse or chip and what it's meant to her life. And uh, but also over the years I've watched a lot of young people get into giving clinics. And it takes several years for a young person to develop a style of teaching that is really fits the horse and fits people. Uh, Paul's come a tremendously long ways with that. And uh, and his, his work is outstanding. And I'm also very proud to say that he was picked as being one of the presenters at the Ray Hunt Memorial Clinic at the end of February. And so I'm going to visit with Christine here a little bit. And uh, Christine, how did you get started with this type of horse with Chip and who with and how did it all go? How it all went was I was um, blessed enough to be introduced to Paul and we actually started dating first and then he introduced me to his type of horsemanship, which was totally different than what I was doing with my horses. The difference in my horses is unbelievable. Um, I had horses that wouldn't tie, that wouldn't stand still, and he taught me how to get to the feet. The other thing that I did, um, unfortunately, with other clinicians that I had gone to, they got me into myler bits. And the myler bit was making my horses very rigid, um, very unrelaxed. And I do have one horse, Mr. Miles, who remembers that, and he's still coming through um, now that I have him in the snaffle only. But he was unfortunate to be yanked on a little bit too much with the myler. So he's still a little rigid, but with the snaffle and everything with my horses, I have three of them, and their disposition, their mind, has is unbelievable, the change and the calmness in them. And not only that, I really feel switching to the snaffle, which Paul recommended, and allowing my horse, him teaching me to get to their mind and then to the feet, they are so much calmer, and they're willing to learn and they, they stand still, and they get into trailers. And when it comes time to working in the arena, the tools that Paul has taught me, I can take it on the trail. I'm going on to the ranches and things like that. And it's amazing all the things that has helped the horses in the training that Paul's taught me. And the blessing it is, the calmness that I have with the horses and with myself, there's so much more peace when riding and working with my horses now. And the other thing that I can honestly say is it's so much more enjoyable to go out on the trail and to go to these ranches. And I also have more confidence and so does my horses. Thanks, Christine. Yeah, one of the hardest things that over the years that I've seen is for, especially Ray tried to teach us for many, many years and so to tell them about how we fix things up for the horse and let the horse find it. And don't take the sink away from the horse. You don't make things happen. Just let it happen. Fix it up and let it happen. Now I've seen that coming through with you for a long, quite a while now. And Especially with Miles, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that, uh, can you say a few words about Ray and uh, Buck and the experience you've had there? The first one, Memorial, that I, the first place that I went with in Ray was up in Wickenburg. And then two weeks later, we got to go to Tucson in Sonoida to hang out with them. And I was so amazed at the way he just encouraged. And not only that, he was always out for the horse. And I will share this one experience that I was so proud and I had the utmost respect for Ray is when there was a lady that got mad. And she was so mad at Ray. And she says, you know what? You can get mad at me. I don't care. I'm here for the horse. And that's when I knew Ray, why Paul chose him also as a mentor and looked up to him because I had the utmost respect because he didn't care what people thought. He cared about the horse. And the people that truly got it stuck by his techniques. And the same thing with Buck. When I rode the first time with Buck was with Mr. Miles and he was a nutcase. Um, Miles was the first time he was in an arena that had bleachers and he was very, very uncomfortable. And Buck was very patient. He was not, uh, by any means, 
his demeanor and the way he spoke really helped with the techniques that they all do. And I think also when you're with a clinician as Ray and Buck and even my husband Paul, we want to do the best to impress them when all they want is for you to take care of your horse and to be there. But they really changed my life. Um, Paul started it, but with them too, with Buck and Ray and being able to be around them, showed me that these three men that I've ridden with have up the most respect for the horse and they're there for the horse and that's what matters and if you get it god bless you and if you don't just keep going back because sooner or later the light bulb will go off and don't give up and no matter um, what you do as discouraged as you get or anything like that stick to the techniques watch their videos um, continue to strive forward because it is the most amazing journey that you will ever ever have and every single day you will continue to learn more and more. It doesn't just take one clinic. It does take a few. And it continue to do the techniques and the things that need to be done to allow your horse to think and to get to the feet and to become a better rider for you and your horse. And have your horse at peace too. Thanks, Christine. That was great.